Oh, what's up, guys? How do you do? Welcome to the Sean Programming Users TV. In this class, we're going to continue with our Visual Basics .NET tutorials, and in, of course, particularly covering the data grid view and how to populate it with the data from various collections. So, in this class, the collection we're going to see is actually the dictionary. Okay, so we're going to see how to populate our data grid view from a dictionary right here. Now. Of course, you can see if we select an item, we're able to show the selected item in a message box. Okay, so this is it right here. We have the name as well as the category, name of the nebula and category. Then we're populating our data grid view from a dictionary. So this is what we're going to look at. So join us. We get started. So as usual, we're going to start from scratch. Okay, so go ahead, create a console application as opposed to a Windows form application because we want to move step by step and we are starting from scratch now this is our module right here module1.vb now first and foremost we come right here of course we create the module then of course we're going to add our imports so we're going to import the system namespace system.collections the generic which is going to host our that dictionary then the system.drawing and the system.windows.forms but then just right click your project and then come choose the add then under the add go to the reference so under the reference right here we go and search the of course come to the assemblies and then search the windows and then come check this system.windows.forms okay this is the is going to add for us system.windows.forms.dll assembly into our project because we will go creating a windows form application so having done that one will come the first thing that I'll do is that I'll declare a um, data grid view that I'm calling my data grid view and you can see I'm using the with events specifier because I'll be my data grid view is going to be supporting events for example if the user selects an item we're going to be listening to that particular event so having done that one I'll also maintain a private boolean right here that defaults to true called executed first time we'll see how to use it later on then I'll come create a simple method or a simple subroutine that I'm calling populate data. So populate data in this particular case is going to be responsible for first instantiating our dictionary. And as you can see, dictionary is actually a generic collection. So in this case, my key and value are going to be strings. Okay. So it's a generic collection. It does reside in the system with collections, the generic. So I instantiate it. And then of course, using the collection initializer I'm going to set its values so you can see I have a couple of values right here for my dictionary now the first one in this case is the key and then the second one is actually the value so the key will show in our first column where the value will be rendering in the second column okay so if we talk about a dictionary this is basically a collection of key value pairs and indeed in this example you can see we have the case as well as the values okay so key value pairs so yeah we instantiate the dictionary having done that one then we're going to loop through our dictionary so for each nebula as key value pair of string string in nebula then we come right here my data grid view dot shows dot add nebula dot key and nebula dot value so we're going to add the keys and values in our data grid view so having done that one then we'll come right here and then we're going to create an event handler so the event handler is going to listen to our data grid view selection changed events so private sub my data grid view selection changed then given that this is an event handler we're passing in an object which is going to be the sender of the event then you're also passing in an event args object okay given that this is our event handler so we also make it handle the selection okay my data grid view the selection changed so that's what we're going to handling that's the event we'll be handling so having done that one we come and say if executed first time by default is actually true so if it is executed first time that is if we run our project for the first time then we're going to return okay we're just going to return otherwise if that's not the case first before we return we'll set this executed first time 
to false okay so executed first time to false now the reason why you are doing this one is that sometimes of course when you run your project for the first time when you when you are listening to data grid view selection change events the data grid view automatically selects like the first item okay so and then you run the project and first and foremost you are met with the message box now for us we want to we don't want that one so if the selection change we just run our project before user selects anything we don't want to show a message box so in that particular case we'll just set executed first time variable to false then we'll return from execution so the next time if the selection change event is raised the user will have of course checked or clicked a given item in our data grid view so we'll use a try catch block catch argument out of range exceptions now inside our try block will come right here and then get the selected index so dim selected index as integer my data grid view the selected rows we pass in zero okay given that we are interested the user normally can select more than one rows so we just want the index of the first selected row so yeah we get its index property then you're going to check if that selected index is not equal to negative one then this is what we're going to do we'll come and check if my data grid view the selected rows and then the cell first selected cell if its value is not nothing then this is what we'll do we'll come and then obtain that particular value so my data grid view the selected rows dot cells dot value dot to string now we hold it in the name variable then we show it in a message box okay so having done that one then of course we'll move over to our catch block and then we're going to show a message box that contains our argument out of range exception next we're going to create another subroutine that is called setup data grid view that's what is going to do is going to set up our data grid view now we go instantiate the data grid view then of course using the object initializer we will first set the location property of that data grid view its location within the form so we pass the x and y coordinates then we pass in the size of the uh, data grid view its width and height and then the we're going to set the auto size columns mode we'll set it to data grid view auto size columns mode dot fill now this is actually an enum so we going to make is going to actually make our uh, columns to span the whole width of the data grid view now selection mode equal to data grid view dot selection mode dot full row select if the user selects a single cell we're going to select the whole row then column count we're going to have two columns then we come right here our first column header will be the name while the second column header will be the category then we come we invoke the populate data method then we'll come right here create another subroutine that is going to be responsible for creating our form so we come we instantiate the form we set the form title as well as the size of the form as well as the background color so having done that one we're going to add that particular form to our controls property of our form so my form dot controls dot add then we add the data grid view so having done that one we're going to enable the visual styles then we come we invoke the run method passing in our form then we'll come to our main subroutine this is the entry point to our application so in this case what we'll do is that we'll just invoke the setup data grid view and then invoke the create form method so that's all we need to do then we click the run button to run our project so if we come right here by default you can see the first item is selected yet the message box hasn't been shown to us so we click an item then as you can see it's going to show us an item so this is it guys this is what we've looked at like this video and make sure you share it also and also we're going to post the source code in our website campusha.info otherwise take care i'll catch you in the next class